We all know the church tonight's not what she started out being. And most of this room probably agree that the church is not what she was when you started out in it. Amen? But in light of all of that, we have to remember what the Word of God says. The Word of God says in Mark 16 and 18, Jesus said it. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. I don't know if that does anything for you or not, but that tells me this. If I am a part of this church, this glorious church, this church that's going to be called out of this old earth, I do know this. If I'm a part of this church, if I'm a part of God's holy, holy church, then it will. I will not. I cannot. This church cannot fail. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? <coughs> I just know that tonight. I don't know about you, but it excites me to know that I'm on the winning side. Amen. It excites me to know that I'm on a side that cannot Amen. fail. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. She's not really what this world sees her to be. She may not be what she ought to be. But the gates of hell shall not prevail against her. She shall be a glorious church. She shall be without spot or wrinkle. She shall be a church that's called out of this earth. And this world left to a demon possessed crowd. That they might have their way with it for a short time. And then we're coming back. I said, we're coming back. Oh, we're coming back with it. We're coming back with it, church. And we will rule and reign with it on this earth for a thousand years. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a head tap of praise while I break the Lord. I, I love to win. How about you? I said, I love to win. I never cared anything for losing. You know, I've heard all this, all this malarkey about we've come here to have a good time and all of that in sports, sports games and, you know, tell kids we just all about having a good time. But the time I never had a good time losing, I'll just tell you. I never, I never enjoyed it. I mean, it ain't never been nothing good about it. I always wanted to win. And I have signed up. I said, I've signed up on the winning side. I, I just, I'm, I'm encouraged about that. I'm excited about that tonight. That I am on the winning side. I'm on the side of the guaranteed winners tonight. Hallelujah to God. It might look like I'm not winning. It might look like the church is going down. It might look like it. But it doesn't make any difference what it looks like. The Word of God tells me that we will overcome. Hallelujah to God. We will march out of here. We will be raptured out of here. We will be caught up into the clouds and meet the Lord in the air. That's us, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Jesus describes the end time people in Matthew 11 and 12. That's what he said. He said, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Same group. I said it's the same group. And our vision, the vision that we have, I'm not talking about a pastoral vision. I'm talking about a, a, an encompassing vision of the entire church. Our vision must be to take in the fact that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself, and Christ is now in us, carrying out that reconciliation. It's an ongoing process, folks. We're a part of this thing. I said, we're a part of it. We're not spectators. I'm telling you, we're not spectators in reconciliation. We're a part of reconciliation. Our lives matter. What we do matters. What we say matters. Where we go matters. What we are, it matters in the Amen. scope of eternity. Amen. Hallelujah to God. I contend tonight that the Christ of this Bible is not in most that call themselves born of God. You hear me? Your brother Clinton used to say, he used to say, I used to get a little disturbed sometime when he said it, but he said that 15%. He said 15% he, he said not born again. Now I don't know where he, where he came to that conclusion at. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that's the way it is. But I do know this. Based on what I see, I'm telling you, it's not very many really born again saints of God. Oh, that doesn't sound pastoral, does it? 
Paul, let me tell you something, folks. This, this Christian life, I'm telling this Christian life, it's, it's not just some kind of a social spectator thing. This Christian life, we, we, look, we look at the acts, the acts of the apostles. We look at the acts of that early church. I'm telling you, what went on in that church is to be going on in our lives. Amen. I see the commitment, the commitment of that early church is to be our commitment tonight. I'm telling you, we're no different from them. We're, the, we're no, just because we live in a different age, just because things may be a little more sophisticated than they were, maybe a little more complex, the responsibility and the call of God is the same tonight as it was on the day of Pentecost. It's no different. And what was required of them is required of us. Amen. Amen. What was required of them is required of us. This Christ, He's God. I said He's God. The Word says, I am the Lord. It's Malachi 3 and 6. I am the Lord. I change not. He is what He has always been. He is who He's always been. He's a healer of every sickness. You know, sometimes, sometimes we get, oh, I don't know, sometimes we get, seem, seem like we get overwhelmed. You know, like my brother says, brother been in the hospital and in the hospital and then this kind of sickness and this kind of, and, I, and we deal with it here. You know, the, some of us, uh, bodies are wearing out and things going on and, you know, uh, aches and, and sickness in these bodies and sometimes if we're not careful we'll get discouraged and say well I just don't know I just don't know if the word of God is true you listen to this pastor tonight I don't care I lay down to take a nap this afternoon and I hurt my body hurt I couldn't sleep but that doesn't change the word of God he's still as much a healer tonight as he was on that on that Damascus road are you listening to me he's still the healer tonight he's still He'll heal like he did when Peter walked down the road and his shadow fell on people. He's still the same healer as he was when he laid hands on that widow named boy. Are you hearing me? He's still the same God. Same one uh, that put mud in, in a man's eyes and told him to wash and you see. Same God. Same God that lays that man at the gate beautiful. He's the same healer. Amen. Same one. Amen. So he hadn't changed. Oh no. He had changed. He remains the same. Amen. the Savior of mankind. He's the only answer, folks. I said He's the only answer. Ain't no other answer for mankind. And there won't ever be another answer. If we ever can just get that settled in our hearts. No other answer. This is it. This is, we've got it all. I mean, it's Him. There is nothing else. I mean, it's not Him and, 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 and Grandma. It, it's not Him and the guy down the road. It's not Him and the banker, Him and the lawyer, Him and the judge, Him and the doctor. It's just Him. Just Him. Just Him. That's all. Just Him. Amen. And our vision, that's what I'm talking about. Our vision of Him must carry us beyond the broken down walls and the burned out gates and demons of unbelief. I said the demons of unbelief. The true vision of the real Christ must dictate our every waking moment. So, I don't know what you think about. My wife says to me, she says your mind goes all the time. She says we you can't sleep, your mind's gone. What you think about? <laughs> what you think about? Oh, I'm telling you, I do think about this great Christ. I do think about, I do think about this great, great work of God that He's called us everyone to. This great, great kingdom that He's called us to be a part of. I'm telling you, it's wonderful. We must come to the same place as Paul when he said this. He said, for me to live is Christ. For me to live is Christ. What a place for I said, for me to live. That's what Paul said. He said, if I'm living, it's all about Christ. For me to do that, for me to live, it's all about Him. And that must be our passion. Amen. We must be consumed with Him. I said, consumed. That's the born again <laughs> believer. The born again believer is consumed with Christ. Our testimony should be like the Apostle Paul's in Philippians 3 and 13. This is what he said. This one thing I do, forgetting all 
forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark of the prize of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. That must be us. Must be our testimony. Amen. And the reason we must, we live, must be Christ, and we must be totally consumed with His desires, are people possessed of it. Mm -hmm. I said, are people possessed of it. Our interest must be Christ. I said, our interest must be Christ and this Christ alone. Amen. You know, this world sees you weird. I know that. I know it sees me weird. It sees me weird to be possessed with the desire of truth. Amen. I mean, this world doesn't think there's any truth. This, this world doesn't think there's any absolutes. You're extremists today if you believe the Bible is the absolute truth. You, you, you're, you're, you're an extremist if you believe the message must be preached in an absolute way. You know, I, I've heard, I've heard it said over and over. You know, that, that uh, you know that that, that, that the, the message, the message is sanctified, but the method's not. Don't you believe that? I said, don't you believe that? That method just is sanctified. I said, the method must be sanctified. Amen to God. 